Hello, what's up everybody? How is it going? Welcome to another video of tutorial series PHP Specials. I'm your host Anwar Ali and I'm here today continuing the same video that we did yesterday. And the topic was object-oriented programming approach for PHP, right? So yesterday we learned some basic uh, PHP stuffs like creating class uh, and making the objects of class, accessing the functions and variables of class through object. And today, and we also built a calculator app uh, where we pass the information that the user selected to a file where we used the functions of the class in order to uh, in order to calculate the uh, calculate the output of two numbers using by allowing user to choose the operation they want today we will be doing something uh, uh, that is much uh, much like a real time task instead of just basic simple calculator calculating or some simple app we'll be doing some really uh, frequently used tasks like uh, MySQL operations uh, in uh, object-oriented approach by creating some classes and uh, let's try to do that so let us quickly select a database that we are about to use today and I think we'll be using PHP specials for this <coughs> and among these uh, uh, let's say tables let us use mm, news okay so we have a table called news where we have ID, title, description and author. Let us just create a simple form uh, that allows us to add a new entry and a form that allows us to edit an existing entry and a listing where we list in the entire news. And this way we will be and we also let we will also let the user to delete. Uh, so this way we can maybe uh, cover some basic crude operation using object oriented approach so what I want to do today is I would just want to I just don't want to miss uh, this folder by just creating files and files what I just want to do is I would like to create a new folder inside this PHP spatials and I'll call the folder OOPS <coughs> so that it's easy for us uh, to understand to, to separate our procedural uh, uh, I mean coding with our object oriented coding so what I want to do is I want to copy all the uh, codes that we do, did yesterday and I want to place it inside OPS so it becomes easy for us to uh, work out so let us just skip yesterday's task let, let us just uh, let it be inside uh, PHP specials but what I want to do today is I want to create new files inside OPS and work it from there. So first thing, let us uh, create a class, okay? PHP, uh, and I want to first of all create a class inside OPS. So and I want to give the name inc.php. So this will be our main class that will be responsible for performing various tasks. Okay, so where is inc? Is it inside OPS? No, I think we created it inside. Where did we create it? I'm not sure. Let me just create it quickly inside OPS. So new file, control S and inc.php. <clears throat> and what I want to do here is I want to create a class named inc and write some codes over here okay then I want to create a function and we discussed about constructor yesterday and we I told you that construct and constructor is a function that automatically gets called whenever its object is being created so once the object is created the first thing it does it it calls the constructor so this is the first thing that happens inside the class once its instance has been created so we can do something that is really very basic and which is done 
uh, on like um, top of the page that we want to do it on uh, like in the very beginning of any task so if we try to go and see some of the pages that where we have used like uh, P mysql operations for example inside pagination if you see the first thing that we usually do is we connect to the database see similarly in case of let's say save order you see the first thing that we usually do is we <coughs> connect to the database so the constructor the function since it is uh, it is called as soon as the object of that class is created so we can generally use the constructor in order to connect to the database so each time the object is accessed it first of all connects to the database so that we don't have to connect it again and again for edit for insert for and delete and for everything so the best thing that we can do inside constructor is initialization that we want to do on the very beginning like database connection even like uh, session handling and many other things that we want to do so the, and the, for such type of task uh, constructor can be used so currently I want to use constructor in order to connect to the database so I will create a function and call it uh, uh, inc as I told you the name of the constructor should be exactly same as the name of the class that is what I did so this is the constructor but a stra but a standard approach to write a constructor is not by repeating the name but by just doing underscore underscore construct so this is exactly same as writing inc but this is uh, 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 like, like let's say this is the more appropriate way to uh, create a, or define a constructor so I just want to mention a comment here and this is equivalent to I and C okay so this is how we generally write the constructor underscore underscore two times and construct okay so what I want to do is we generally did something like this right link equals to my SQL I underscore connect and the first parameter is local host second parameter is root third parameter is mysql and fourth parameter is php underscore spatials which is my database name this is what we usually did in previous files in procedural approach so if you see in save order uh, link equals to this okay and this link in search.php let me check in save order and this link is generally used in multiple places like here the link is being used here similarly in case of um, let's say uh, comment uh, we also did a commenting system right ajax comment so where was that comment yes so comment and comment is saved it in like say it's saved in comment listing okay let's go to comment list it is here and we use save comment over here so in case of mysql uh, in this link uh, has also been used in this function mysql real escape string link so this link that is being used to connect uh, uh, to the mysql server the link that is being returned by mysql like connect is generally used in multiple places so we might uh, uh, we might have to use this variable link in multiple places in our class but you must understand that a function has a scope any variable that is defined inside the function can only be used within the, that function either the variable should be global or this variable which is defined inside the inside a function can only be used inside that very function so what we need to do is we not we should not make this variable specific to this function rather we should make a generic variable that can be used everywhere for such a variable that can, that is generally used in most of the places right so instead of defining our link here what we can do is we can define a public variable like we used to do in previous uh, that like, like we uh, like we did in previous uh, video so what we generated in order to uh, create a variable we give the variable name like this and initially we define something that is uh, false or null or blank okay now we can use this variable we can assign a new value to this variable which is 
inside construct now in order to assign new value we can just give give the name of the variable what what we should do is we should do this link right so now the link of the uh, the value of this this variable is being replaced by uh, what uh, replaced by something that is being returned by this function so if you want to access the variable of the class we have to give this arrow and then the name of the variable this way without dollar sign so this will replace the value of link by that which is being returned by mysql connect and the null is being replaced by this value okay so this is what we want to do in our constructor create our link and connect to the database now second thing that we usually do is we execute our queries right so function i want to make a, uh, a generic function let us also give public to these functions public public so we generally uh, do delete update add and select right so i want to create some short functions so that i don't have to write my sql -like query each time so first of all in order to execute any query i will just create a function called query okay and pass my query here okay so i'm passing a query to this function and in order to execute this query what i want to do is i just want to call my sql i underscore query okay the my sql i query has two parameters the first parameter is this link right so this link is being now placed in this variable so in order to access my sql i connects link i need to use this variable so instead of writing link i'll say this link right because this link now has the value of mysql i connect because as soon as the constructor as soon as the object is being created the constructor gets called and this function is being called which returns a value which i placed in this variable now this variable can be used in all the functions so in order to execute any query now i just call a function called query right and I'll pass second parameter the queue that is being passed to the function now I will assign this to a value value called result now instead of performing operations inside result I'll just return this result from here so that we can use it anywhere as we wish okay so this is the query to normally execute any queries second thing we will not be executing query in the uh, in the main file or in the view file where we will be displaying our tables forms but rather i will be creating a different function for select update add and delete for example let me just create a function for delete so public function delete so if i want to delete any entry from the database i'll be using this function so where do we generally delete from we delete from a table right and what do we use to delete uh, any entry from the table we generally use id so let us pass two parameters from which table i want to delete the data from and the id of that data that i want to delete so i'll pass two parameters the first parameter is the table name and the second parameter is the id that i want to delete right so if i do this i can create my own delete query now so my query would be delete from the table name so i'll concatenate the table i'll give a space because i need the space after table name so before the table name and after a table name i need a space so where id equals to concatenate with dollar id so this way i created a query now what i need to do is i need to execute the query so in order to execute this query i'll be calling this function because this function is already doing the task of executing the query so what i'll do is i'll just call this the function name is query q we are a query and pass my q over there this way so by doing this what i've done is i've successfully executed this query dynamically by passing the table name and just by passing the table name and query and id in, into this function by passing the table name and id i was able to create a query which i then passed to this function by calling this query and this is generally denotes 
the class that we are uh, currently working on so this means this class so the, the query function of this class inc class which is this so i'm passing my query which will execute and return result and i will hold the result in let's say result okay so by doing this i'm deleting my entry similarly in order to uh, let's say update something function update maybe i need the set of the values that i need to update and i need the table name where i want to update and maybe i need an an id for the entry that i want to update so i need three parameters the set of values that i want to update secondly the table name and thirdly the id so i will pass dollar tbl table name first thing i need the second thing the id of the entry that i want to update and third thing is the value on the set of the values that i want to change in of uh, for this id so and thirdly it would be dollar some some set of values which i will send in array and i will explain you how will i work out with this okay so just shortly fourthly i will just uh, i'm just keeping the update for uh, later reference and i need the same thing for insert right instead just the difference is i don't need id because id is not yet created when we are inserting some entry so i need the table name where i want to insert some data and the set of values that i want to insert into the table and i will work out for update and insert uh, shortly but before that i want to create another function to get the entries from the database so i just create a function called get so delete uh, update insert and get or you can just call it select <coughs> so so what do we generally do from select let us not go to the detail select but what we generally do we select uh, values from uh, table so we need a table so if, for example if we want to do select all from news we want uh, the name of the table that we are that we want to select the data from that is news so i'll pass the table here okay this way so what this will do we need to create a query just like delete and the, my query would be select all from which table the table that is being passed over here so dot dollar tbl right now i want to execute this and in order to execute we already have a function called query so i'll just call the function this query and pass the queue over here and i will execute the query by calling this function and it, it will return us the result and i will place this in a variable called result and i will again return this result return dollar result because after selecting we might also have to fetch right fetch the query in the loop so what i'll do is in order to fetch i will not be fetching manually but i will always i will i will already create a function so i will have to create a function and just name it fetch so what we generally do for uh, in order to fetch we pass this result after executing the query and we loop it in a while loop by using mysqli underscore fetch underscore row or associative or object right so i need this result that is need to be fetched so i just need to pass the result and i will be using uh, let's say mysqli underscore fetch underscore object and of dollar result and maybe i need to <coughs> return this also what i can do is before fetching we we also generally do some one more thing that is counting the number of rows if the number of rows that we just selected is more than zero then we fetch and if it is not uh, greater than zero which means it is less than zero that means we don't we haven't fetched any data in that case we need to uh, we don't we don't uh, want to uh, fetch it right so we generally check the number number of the rows that we just selected so in order to do that i'll just create another function that says uh, let's say check underscore num we can create our own function and we need to pass this result over here so what we can do is we'll pass the result and try to check the number of rows so what we'll do is return mysqli underscore num underscore rows of the result that we just passed to the function 
<coughs> okay, so we have a function to check the number of rows, we have a function to fetch, now we need to work out with something, okay? We need to work out with update and insert, which I will cover very shortly, but I want to use this these function first, so that uh, we have, we, uh, we can maybe utilize the time much, and we can work out with insert and update if we have some time more. So I want to create a page called news underscore list dot php. So this is the place where I want to list all of my news. Okay. So php. The first thing I want to do is I want to include this class inc dot php inside my news list. So inc lud include inc dot php. Okay. So I have already included my class. So now, the second thing I want to do is I need to create the object for this class. So in order to create the object, what I want to do is I want to just create a variable and say new inc. So this way I have already created the object. Now as soon as the object is created, the first thing that happens is I and the, this, this constructor is being called. So once the constructor is being called, uh, the MySQL like connect takes place and we pass our localhost root mysql and php's database name and this is returned to this value right this link so link is now being updated by mysql connect so we have already connected to the database just by creating the object so our first task for news list is already accomplished that is being that is to make the connection to the mysql server and selecting the database so we have already completed <coughs> this task by just creating the object now second thing i want to do is I want to grab all the entries from the from the news, right? <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to select all the news, right? So what I what I'll do is I'll call this function with the help of this object I just created. So all I need to do is I'll just create a variable news equals to dollar obj or let's say result equals to dollar obj select and select expects one parameter and that is dollar tbl table name so what i'll do is i'll just pass the name of the table and my table is news right so i want to select all the entries from the news from this table news right so this what this will do is this will execute a query it will generate a query that select all from tbl which is news right and this will uh, this will send this query to query function which is over here so what will do it will execute select all from news and pass the first parameter to be this link which is which is already defined by our constructor so it will uh, it will execute select all from news and it will send it to result and it will return the result and the result is now being placed in this result so we have selected everything without writing any query we have already uh, selected all the uh, all the values from the news now second thing that i usually do after selecting uh, all the entries from the news by after running the query of select that i do is i generally check the number of rows that it return so for example in save order or in comment list what i do is after selecting what i did was i checked the number of the rows so this is exactly uh, we have completed everything till here now I want to do is what I want to do is I want to check the number of rows. So what I'll do is if dollar obj in order to check the number of rows we have a function that says check num. So I will I will use this check num and pass this result into this check num. Dollar result is greater than zero. So what this will do is once we call the check num it will pass the result to the check num so in check num we will receive the result and check if my sql underscore num underscore rows of the result and return it so we are after returning it we are checking the return value is greater than zero or not so if the return value is greater than zero only then we will have to fetch it right so um, first of all if we have some values greater than zero what i want to do is i want to create a table and let us also maybe <coughs> uh, create an HTML on the top HTML or maybe even after creating the class and objects so after creating the object I want to end the PHP here here and I want to create HTML document here 
so news listing would be its title and inside body I'll be doing all these things okay <clears throat> so I select everything from news I also want to use the bootstrap so what I will do is link href equals to I'm inside OOPS so I need to get out of OOPS so I'll do dot dot slash now I need to get inside bootstrap so boot strap strap slash I need to get inside dist CSS bootstrap dot CSS so this is how I linked my bootstrap with my uh, news list now I can use classes of bootstrap inside table class equals to table table dash striped or maybe table dash bordered okay and that's it for now <clears throat> I want to create some heading so in order to do that I will write tr and th my first heading would be title my second heading would be <clears throat> description and my third heading would be action which I'll use to delete and edit the content okay so I'll have two buttons inside action edit and delete <clears throat> now in order to list out all the news uh, under an, uh, upcoming TRs I need to use while so in order to use while I need to start my PHP and start my while loop so what we do inside while is we fetch the rows and what we generally do I just want to show it here so we fetch the rows and place it in row and we can use the name and comment of the rows like this right so what I'll do is instead of writing my SQLI underscore fetch now we already have a function called fetch I'll just call this so I'll do while dollar row equals to my SQLI instead of writing my SQLI I'll use dollar obj arrow fetch and pass the result to this value okay <clears throat> pass the result to this value and just write tr and my first uh, item is my title so inside tr i'll write a td and give a title php echo dollar obj title i'll create another td and give the description I don't want my description to be too long so I'll just write some substring str to this description and I just want to start my description from 0th index and I want to show around 50 characters so I'll do this <clears throat> my third TD would be action which will have two links that is the first one is for edit so I'll just place the href to be hash for now uh, just to see, see how it looks like my class would be btn and btn dash primary for blue button and i want another one button that is a href equals to i want to give it hash for now give some class btn btn danger for red button and i will just give this delete let's see how our news list look like so localhost slash php specials and inside ops we have news list dot php <coughs> Uh, so we should have uh, a title and description here but we are not getting any and the reason is and the reason is it should show why is it not showing let me just quickly check it inspect the element my TD is blank and my TD is blank so why is the TD blank Mm, so it should not be obj it should be row right because row is being used to fetch the entries that is why so now we can see we have title and we have description over here to make description a little bit user friendly I'll just add some dots at the end so that people can understand that this needs to get continued okay so we have a table which has title description and edit and delete function now what I want to do is I want to give a heading called news listing first of all on before the table here h1 and news listing and another thing I want to do is just below the h1 I want to have a button that says add new news in order to add some new news 
add new news. So if I want to add new news, I can use this anchor. And I want to give some class to this anchor, so class equals to btn, btn-info maybe. So I'll use info to add new news. Let me give some hr after the anchor hr so that some spacing is there between the news and the table this way another thing i want to do is i want to place this entire body into a container div class equals to container so that i get some spacing on the left and on the right okay so I think we'll have oh, okay. So here we are. We have news listing, add new news, edit and delete. So what I want to cover today is because we are running out of time, I will continue tomorrow. I want to complete delete before I go. So let us create a delete.php for this. So what I want to do is delete news.php. So I want to use this in order to delete the news. So I will be covering add and edit tomorrow, but I want to complete delete before I leave. So to in order to delete, I'm just creating delete news.php, which I'll be creating inside OPS. So control S, delete underscore news.php. And what I want to do here is I want to do the exactly same thing that I just did, that is these two lines, I just want to copy. And what I want, uh, what I'm doing by doing this is I'm just including the same class, I'm just creating in the new object and as soon as I'm creating the object the database connection task is already done now all I need to do is I need to get the ID that is about to be get deleted so uh, while I am uh, sending this link to delete underscore news dot PHP I will also send an ID through this the ID that I'm about to delete for example question mark ID equals to the ID of this row so what I'll do is PHP echo dollar row ID. So by doing this, I'm sending my ID to delete underscore news uh, in the index ID. So let's see if we are getting things correctly. So if you just see over here, you can see the uh, link over here as soon as I hover in the delete. So you can see we have delete underscore news dot PHP question mark ID into one on the um, bottom corner bottom left corner see so for this we have id equals to 2 for this we have id equals to 3 for this we have id equals to 4 id equals to 5 id equals to 6 and id equals to 7 so let's just click on this it will not work now but if you just click on this we can see the id equals to 7 is being passed so for this the id equals to 6 is being passed so now what we need to do is we need to grab this id and since this id is being sent from url through get I need to grab the ID this way so ID equals to dollar underscore get ID so what now we are able to get the ID now we can use this ID in order to delete so to delete we have already created a function called delete which expects two parameters the first parameter is table name and the second parameter is ID we know the table name is new so what we want to do is we would just want to call that function dollar obj delete the first parameter is table name which is news and the second parameter is id which is which we are grabbing from the get right so by doing this we are now able to delete the news now we can also create one more function inside ink which is maybe redirect to news listing just after we delete so we can create a function called redirect which will be used to redirect uh, to some other page after something is done so let us give just give the URL that we want to read, read it to and I generally we can also use header and location and give the URL over here by doing this dollar URL concatenate the URL with the uh, header but uh, this has some complexities that we need to understand if something is already being displayed on the top of the page or some, we, we get some response in some URL or we already have some response in the URL that in that case header location will throw an error that says header has already been sent so in order to minimize that we can use this for now 
that's not a uh, problem at all this will automatically redirect our URL to this URL so let us just try this so I'll also show you an option an alternate option for this header location okay so what I want to do is after I delete my news I want to redirect back to so in order to re redirect I'll just call the redirect function of that class using the object obj and I want to redirect back to news underscore list dot php so I'm just passing news underscore list to the redirect so it, this function will get called and in the URL we will we'll be passing news underscore list so it will redirect us to news underscore list so let's try this out back refresh so let's say I want to delete the Chinese dream so let me just click on delete you can see it is gone the Chinese news is no more here so this way we can uh, delete and list the entries using object oriented approach now we can compare our code in order to select all we did is this these two lines first and in order we we have never wrote any queries right we just wrote one query inside inc or some sets of functions inside inc now we're just using that function without writing any writing any code by just calling the functions we are able to do everything and the, the amazing thing is we can use these functions repeatedly in many pages in many files in order to delete we did the same thing we have not written a single line of query we are just calling the function that we have already created so by doing this we are minimizing our lots of tasks so this is not only uh, the place where we can use this we can have multiple modules inside our project this is the only this is only related to the news the news can have categories we have different pages maybe we, we can control the customers only by using this one class because we have completed delete we have completed select and i will also teach you tomorrow how do we control update and insert dynamically by just passing an array into it in order to insert and update how do we manipulate this so this might take some time so i just want to skip it today and i'll continue tomorrow in the update and insert part for crude operation how do we can we how we can control it uh, dynamically so this is how we select and delete and use crude operations many of the functions of mysqlite dynamically so by just creating one class we can use it in each and every modules we wish and minimize our workload so that was it for today i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you understood and if you did don't forget to hit the like button and if you have not subscribed yet please click click on the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the bell icon if you don't want to miss any videos from me uh, till then uh, have a nice time. I will see you tomorrow with the new topic. Have fun. Goodbye.